Okay, my name is Sara Ekstrom. Pleased to meet you all, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, and I'm here to talk a little bit about my, my work as a visual artist in connection to the exhibition here as well. And, and uh, if you have any questions, please, at any moment, go ahead and ask. I would love to have this more like casual, especially since we are so few. So um, is the, there's no way of, of blocking the lights a little bit. So we will see a little bit, little bit better. Yeah, that's better. Um, this, this, is, uh, this is not my work, obviously. <laughs> this is a painting from uh, Peter Ertsen, a, a, a Dutch artist. And this work is from, from 1550, I think. Um, I was seeing this painting at first in, in, in uh, Lund, uh, university city in, in Sweden. Um, and it made a huge impression on me. I've, I've seen still lives before and they have, I've been captivated by them and they have, they have these kind of interesting qualities. I mean, the whole, whole era when, well, Kertu, you can always correct me if I'm wrong because you know everything about still life now. So, so what I found was interesting in, was, was the time when, when the religious painting was changing into something, something more, uh, let's say, uh, prof profane, you know, that it was not anymore only, only depicting um, religious motives, but, but, but merchant people and, and, the, and the bourgeoisie was slowly getting enough of money to, 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 to order works that they preferred and that were sort of describing their world. And, and this is a painting where actually these two worlds combine so at the first, the first you see the huge kind of meat display, like a, like a butchery or something like that. And when you look more closer, there in, the, in these kind of gaps there in between, you can see the holy family dealing, giving, I don't know, I can't make it any bigger. Oh yeah, I can. Giving um, uh, alms to the poor. So, so and, and of course, then you have these fish in the cross form and so forth. So, so, it was extremely captivating on, on number one, like uh, this, this sort of this, this time when, when you could, both of these, these um, uh, topics were, were present in a painting. And, and, uh, and the other thing was the really rich symbolism that was actually in both of them. So, so here we have the Holy Family in the background, that's clearly a religious motif, and then here, here to the right corner, we have lots of like um, oyster shells and, and looks like something of a, of some kind of a, a hooker, hooker house there in the corner or something like this. So, so you have this very re religious and very like um, cheap or let's say not valued things that are, are, are connected in the same painting as well. So it, it really jumps from one extreme to another. So all of these various things that are present here have their own significance and, and, and of course these paintings were also made to, to show expertise as a painter so you, you could paint various kinds of materials like fish, meat, people, so forth and make it as realistic as possible but, but then these, all these objects had, had certain messages that, that, that they were conveying for the viewer so it's, it's like seductive in very many different ways um, quite a lot of these this, 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 um, motives have to, have to do with, has to do with this, this uh, like the exhibition is called the ephemeral things connected to life, that, that these vanitas motifs, they are always uh, quite occupied with, with our short existence here and we should be prepo prepared for the afterlife in one way or the other, so we, we should acknowledge uh, that we have to uh, try to stay virtuous and, and, and live a good life according to moral genetics and so forth. So they had a moral, moral kind of uh, message. Um, when I was starting to sort of, uh, this, this, this Im image stuck with me for quite a while and I was really kind of uh, trying to figure how to, how to process and how, or how to bring the same kind of motives into, 
in the contemporary art world, and and that's when I was I was I was um, started to work with Tigehams. So I was I was for an exhibition in Turku in in 2000 and um, I think that this was 2002 or something like that. I was I was buying 12 big hands and tattooing them with, with various kind of religious motives. And they were presented openly in this kind of freezer, so you could actually go around and touch them. So they were very present. It was like a, in a way, like a commentary to the, to the, uh, to this Peter Artsen's uh, butchery meat stall, but then still bringing it into, into the world that I was living in. And, and actually it was not 2000, it was, it was, in, it was at the end of nine, 99 or something like that, this exhibition was. So here are some, some close-ups of the images. I was very much thinking about uh, when I was doing this, I tattooed them myself. I was buying a tattoo machine in, in Helsinki and, <laughs> and learned, learned how to use it. So I, I stitched these myself to the, to the hams and, and the motives that I chose were, were are connected with um, martyrs. So these are this kind of, and, and uh, let's say the roses are, are then to, to, um, to Maria then, mostly to the Madonna figure. And, and uh, I was curious of, of, let's say, how to, how to express um, things that are affecting us in our lives, like how we are affected to certain kinds of things. And, and that, that we want to, that how our lives are branded in a way. So, so this was one way of, of, of presenting it. What kind of, let's say, um, uh, how we are, we are seduced to certain kind of things and how we are approaching life and what kind of marks life is leaving on our skins or on our, on our personalities. Uh, connected to this work was, was another one. This is, a, this is sheep's intestine. You know, you, you were seeing the sausages hanging there in the, in, the, in the meat stall. And here I was stuffing this intestine with roses. So that was becoming something, there was something very fragile in it, but some, something quite, I would say, kind of, they were both, from, I was actually thinking about this kind of um, rosary, you know, where you where you count the pearls and you read your prayer and you and you contemplate. Uh, you have this kind of sort of uh, meditational discussions with yourself and with 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 the with the God or with the, with with whom you want to approach. But in this work, there is this kind of uh, I would say tones of sensuality as well. So it's not only you know. The, this kind of um, um, religious contemplation, but it is also, a, a, I would say, a sexual one. So, so, so in a in a similar way as as Artsen was combining these two features in his painting, I was searching for some similar kind of approach to what what a rose can represent. But what happens to a rose when you actually stuff it inside a you know, to make sausage out of it. How does it change? <laughs> and it became very different. So, um, and, and at the same time, we are dealing with, with, with themes that have strength and fragility in them at the same time. Um, the next exhibition I was busy with is nursery. Um, this was shown in, in Turku, 2000-ish, uh, and, and um, Again, we are dealing with, with, with like, you know, still life in a way or, or connections to still life. It's a table filled with uh, roses that have been broken and then fixed with plaster and band-aid and so forth. I was inviting children to do this, this kind of nursery, kind of like flower hospital. And, and after they had fixed them, then this was what remained. I was also documenting them while they were doing it. So there was a video presented in the exhibition where, where the children are breaking the flowers and, and, and restoring them. So it was, it was also, in a way, um, how you deal with your traumas in life. Like how does children, how do children, for instance, uh, um, let's say, process things that are quite difficult to process when 
when you have been experiencing things that were maybe not so, not so good and which are verbally really difficult to feel with, there might be other ways of, of, of um, approaching these kind of, yeah, maybe even traumatic things. So, so um, this nursery exhibition was, was circulating around this theme. The flowers that they fixed, which were previously made, I showed as a series of photos in the exhibition, and um, I, was, I was shooting them. I used this kind of studio camera, six by, this is 6x6 six six, Mamiya, and, and I was um, scanning, I was first making these photos, and I was, after they had been processed, I was sort of scratching and, and, and handling these images in various kinds of ways. So. But this is, this is then a series that is connected to the exhibition. There are, of course, all sorts of um, symbolic values, also what comes to, for instance, to the lily, which is a symbol of purity, especially white ones. But again, there is this sensuality. It, it's quite interesting. I have actually never really portrayed people, only until very recently. And I was like flowers or plants or vegetables are in a way some kind of stand-ins for people. So you might regard these as some sort of portraits in a way. Uh, then we are moving on. This is 2002 and, and in Pori Art Museum in Finland as well, an exhibition called Mnemonic. Mnemonic is this kind of um, memory roots, sort of aids for memory actually. This had also to do with childhood experiences. Uh, the summer house where, well, which we had was sold and, and pulled down. And just before we were leaving, I was, I was f uh, photographing um, the wallpapers in, in the various rooms of the, of the house. And I made a presentation with, with um, five slide projectors with the same image in each of them. And, and the, the slide was never changing. So the, so the light of the projectors were, was slowly burning out the image. So the image was disappearing as a memory does disappear. Um, in connection, there was this kind of huge wall made of these kind of white paliettes. And it was also like, it didn't anymore signify anything. It was like, a, like an empty surface, like a tabula rasa. And there was this fan in front of it, which was making this sort of air move on it. And it was creating these whirls and, and, and images on the surface of this, of this white kind of milky water. It, you, it sort of, you were getting, I mean, there were all sorts of faces and <laughs> creatures appearing, appearing on, this, on this wall. Here are the, so I was moving with a torch as if I was an intruder in my old childhood. Uh, the, the wall was making a slight sound itself. It had this kind of like leaves rustling a little bit type of a thing. And the fan was making this kind of a mechanical sound. So there were sounds, yes. Yeah, so I was, I was sort of as if I was breaking in, you know. So I was, I was making these kind of um, images and, and eventually then during the exhibition they disappeared or discolored and faded away. Uh, then I had a video um, in connection to that as well. There were this kind of white lilies again, which were, were pulling out this black color. And, and um, I was filming in this kind of time lapse, the same way as, as the tomatoes in the exhibition here. So, so there's an image taken every five minutes or something. And then they all put together, and then you get this kind of process. Uh, I can maybe quickly show you a few minutes of it in the female. We don't have so much time and I have too much stuff to show to you, but, but let's, let's check if we can have a little look at it. This is, this is based on, I was interviewing kids about their early childhood memories and they were all, you know, they all had their stories to tell. They were not necessarily, you know, very correct, 
but they, they were, were very real for them. So, but here you see this is the same thing as the flowers are sucking in black water. So in a way expressing that, that, that we are sort of, our lives are moving between light and darkness and we are being affected by things around us. We are not separate from, from things. So there's, there comes slowly, there comes a text on top of this where, are, where I've been picking out certain phrases from the, from the children's narratives about themselves. They say that these kind of, um, that they, these are extremely important for, for, for your development as well, that you have this kind of um, story of where you come from and who you are. So these are from very early kids to, uh, let's say, let's say four, five years old until eight or something like this. I don't think we have time to look at, look at it all together, but, but there's some kind of really beautiful kind of sense of innocence and, and, and um, yeah. I've, this is one of my fond, <laughs> fond videos. I like it very much. But let's go further with these. So here we have this, this, these two, between these two. I was also making this kind of, uh, well, actually you have very similar type of things here, this kind of uh, ornamentational symmetrical patterns. And these are in a way, um, uh, as if it, it's like as if you're taking this kind of wallpaper or, or something that you remember, a pattern of a sort, and, and, and changing it into this kind of Rorschach pattern. So you get this kind of associational pattern out of it, which, which is used in, in, in uh, psychological tests to analyze your personality and so forth. So, so when you look at these things, you, you start seeing, you know, you can start reading it as if, you can start finding faces or patterns or monsters or beauty in this. In this, this um, it's, there's something strange with, with symmetrical patterns. I mean, they do exist in nature and we consider symmetrical faces very beautiful, but there's still something quite uncanny and unnatural in this, in this kind of symmetrical forms. You, you immediately start finding some kind of peculiarities <laughs> there. And here in the corner, we have a, have a similar, similar pattern. It's as if the whole room was kind of like, you know, closed as a book and squeezed together. And what was in it has become this kind of like stain in a way on the wall. Uh, then here we see uh, this was opposite to this, this flickering wall. I was just filming milk. Uh, and milk has, of course, like lots of different kind of significances as, as um, as nourishing thing, also something uh, both both beautiful and both a little bit disgusting. I was just hearing about the, uh, uh, this kind of test that was made on people. They, without knowing it, people were drinking dog's milk, and and when they were knowing that it was milk from a dog, they reacted like you know like yikes like. This is disgusting, but still it's, you know, milk. What's the difference between a cow's milk or a dog's milk? Or why, why does it become, you know, disgusting when it's from a sort of weird source? So, so milk has also, it signifies very many different things. I was also using the milk and I was, I was painting this kind of, using milk, just painting on table surfaces, like spilt milk patterns. Um, which I was then reversing into a negative. So here we go between darkness and light again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They, yeah, yeah, exactly. Everybody knows the statue where they are, the the grounders of of Rome. But still, it's 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 funny that it's there's something. It's it's not you know a fruit. <laughs> Um, this is a little bit like a continuation of the previous exhibition. This is called Grotesque and Arabesque. This was at the Amos Andersson Art Museum in, in, in Helsinki. Um, so here we have the same type of patterns. It's, I was, I was, there's an artist in Finland called Hugo Simbari. 
he was one of um, uh, Gallen, actually Gallen Kallela's students and he was making this kind of beautiful painting where, where skeletons are attending a garden. So, so there's something of this Vukos Imbarian world behind this exhibition. So there were these kind of um, vases which I was painting with different actually intestines and, and yeah, here we have the actually this is a testicle here we have some like intestines and and then there are images of gardens and flowers and stuff like this and then I was I was using this kind of um, slightly peculiar plants in this in this um, pots and, and I was also painting on another kind of garden was was made with with mold so I was getting petri dishes and different kind of bacteria and molds and I was I was painting with them into these kind of dishes and they were growing during the exhibition and and slowly these dishes were completely filled to the brim with this this mold they were closed so it couldn't escape but, but it, it, the process was interesting and i didn't i, I was not doing it before it, they were presented on this kind of uh, light table and i was like equally sort of fascinated and curious of what what would be happening with these but eventually they completely overgrew this. So let's say it's, it's in a way like a study of also that, that if when something is, is, you know, this process is cycle of life, death is not only death because it generates new life again. So let's say when, when you know, um, plants are or people dying, if we are left alone, we are kind of um, coming to earth and, you know, nourishing other plants or something like that. So that in a sense was, was something that I was aiming for as well. Here we have another part of the exhibition and this also here we have this kind of uh, symmetrical patterns. That's my hair. I was making a, a wallpaper so there's also this kind of um, sim hair symbolism is quite strong in, in art. Many artists have been using, using hair in various ways. Um, that's also, hair is also very dualistic kind of subject it's it's like a crown on your head but on your plate it's something else it's also connects to shame and and feminine aspects so i think you for for sure you have been seeing some contemporary artworks with that have been using hair so i was making this kind of wallpaper out of it and in the middle of the wallpaper i had a had a yeah this is a close up of the I was scanning, scanning my hair and then arranging it in these kind of symmetrical patterns and, and then I had a, had a small... Print is not real. Yeah, no, it was not real, no, no. But I had a really long one hair, you know, before I made the work, so I cut it short just to do it, so that was kind of part of the process as well. So then, and then there was this kind of um, a, a little screen with blood drops falling into water. So, and it was sort of upside down, so it felt like as if they were growing like some kind of peculiar plants from, from, from a, uh, like a surface. So you see it looks almost like trees or smoke or some kind of weird growth. Uh, this is also using hair then in a, in, a, in a sink. And here we have milk again on an altar chair. And here we have a drop of milk, which is sort of shooting up like a plant. It looks really beautiful because it kind of divides like very, like by some symmetry or some kind of um, physicality, some kind of law, law of nature or something like that. It, it's very ephemeral. Yes, it, it, yeah, it is, yeah. It no, so it's very different from, let's say, when you, when you have milk as a substance, but when you put it in water, it changes. It moves really slowly and, and there's something extremely fascinating about it. In connection then, and these are maybe the clearest references to, to this kind of garden of death. I was collaborating with a, with a hospital in Turku where I come from. Those are my hands and, 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 and this is a bunch of lilies which I'm holding. So we were doing x-rays and, and uh, these were presented in, in light boxes. Those are color flowers. We have a color in the, or you have a color in the exhibition as well. This is a Gerbera, 
that's my profile. <laughs> it, feel, it was a, such an odd feeling, you know, because I was very much thinking about this kind of um, this, this uh, vanitas motifs and, and, and memento moris, which are using a skull. And there you go, you know, that's it, that's underneath, you know, under all of our skins, we have this grinning skull there. Here it is in, 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 in black, uh, like reversed as well. And here are, are some colors which also become completely as if they were something different. So these were sucking up this kind of, um, uh, I don't know what the liquid is called, but you know when you want to, you know, that you, the veins are getting visible for the X-ray images. So, so these were sort of like absorbing this liquid and then I was photographing them in, in straight on film. Also, they, you know, they, for me they could be water or smoke or completely some other element than actually flowers. Weird, beautiful things. Here we are in the exhibition called Limbus. And just if I go too fast, please let me know. Uh, um, this is in Kiasma in, in Helsinki, in the, in the contemporary museum there. And again, there's a, like a different approach to, to the still life tradition. Uh, I was making this kind of arrangement with flowers and plants in, in, a, in a forest, like a natural preservation area close to Turku. Uh, and I was, you know, early spring and I was leaving them there and, and for a month approximately. And then I was returning nighttime with my camera and a torch and made, made these images with really long exposure times, like using the torch to lighten the thing and then then shooting the image. And the whole process in this one was also quite, in a way, you know, it involved quite a lot of different things like going to the forest in the night time. And I was also like expecting to see just, you know, a bunch of rotting things. And, 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 and suddenly, you know, when I finally was there, they were completely filled with life. They were ants and, and, and snails and, and, you know, I don't know if you, well, this is a black and white image, but here you can see, you know, like snails rolling around. There were like hundreds of them. <laughs> there was some kind of super orgy of, of some kind of new life busy in these in this composting heaps. And, and that, was, that was really fascinating. See, I was also, I was really, you know, wondering that if somebody's going to bump into these things in the forest because there was this i was using wigs like hair and and flowers and fruit and they looked really macabre you know like some kind of very unholy sights of something something undescribable um, the this theme for this limbus exhibition was very much about being in a place that's not connected anywhere, that you are between some things, like between life and death, or between light and darkness, or, or various kind of um, states of being and so forth. So I was, I was in a way searching for, for ways to express this, this in-betweenness. This is from early, yeah. These were actually not in the exhibition, but I, I just took them with me now to show that these have actually never been exhibited. This is how it looked like when it was just freshly made. And then you were seeing the black and white image that was eventually made. Here is the, the other one, Look, looked like this, and eventually turning into something completely different. This, this area where I was making these things was also significant. This is where the most earliest settlements in Finland are being found. So, so you still could find traces of places of offering and stuff like this. And some small object had been found there and they are these kind of burial sites and so forth. So it's very sort of loaded in a way uh, as a space. I don't know if you're familiar to this um, Sally Mann's photo, photos. Have you seen her photos, what she has been making in this kind of, let's say, this kind of, um, where you can sort of uh, donate your body to be rotting away? Yeah, so I was seeing her stuff as well, and I thought that they, I found, like, I felt very sort of connected to these, 
which are also very macabre, but at the same time, <clears throat> I really, I think that they are extremely fascinating and, and peculiar works that leave huge impressions on, on I attended her lecture and she's quite a, quite a character herself as well. So really interesting lady. Um, then I was, um, again, in a little bit different way, I was um, uh, attending a residency in Japan and, and getting extremely fascinated in the, in the Ikebana culture, let's say the flower arrangement culture, and, and um, in a way started fusing these two things in my artwork, uh, both the Western traditional still life and then this kind of Japanese Ikebana type of thing. So, and these have been, uh, in a way, a bit uh, kind of influenced by, by those. So I was making, making this kind of arrangements with flowers, mushrooms, actually things that you could get from the food store in Tokyo and arranging them, spraying them, and then also leaving them to rot. And there, there was something kind of weirdly intestinal about this. They looked like some kind of peculiar thing that has been sort of, you know, some kind of weird gland or, or, or something that comes out of your body, something weird and alien about this. So there were, there were this kind of huge series of those photos, also combined with other images. There were minerals and, and flowers and then these mushroom clusters. And here in the middle there, were this, there was this kind of uh, space where I showed a video um, of three rotating flower arrangements with a, with a text on top as well. This text described a, a, a lady who is in a process of losing herself, so I just show a few images of this video. Gert, you have to tell to me when I have to stop, so we have time to see the video. <laughs> yeah. Here we have... No, they still, they, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is a continuation to the, to the previous wor work. So I was borrowing an, um, a, a statue from the, from the collections of the, of the Ateneum. And on her back, I was projecting this kind of, um, it's, I think it's called Arbor Vita. It's, it's actually the, the brain circulation. It's an image, it's a, it's a tomography of, of, it's not mine but I was, I was getting it from, from one of the, uh, the um, doctors working at the, at the central hospital in, in Turku. So there was this rotating tree, in a way, on her back, and she's heading for this, in this kind of cave uh, monster, <laughs> in a way, there also in a, in a process of losing herself in a way. I was very much thinking about these different levels of, 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 um, of our lives and how, how different levels also in the, in the Earth's core are connected to our history. What happens there? Like, is it there where we come from and there where we end up maybe? Or things in process. This has been liquid once, but not anymore. Yep. <laughs> okay, that sounds really interesting. I, I, I don't think I have the time to see it now, but may, hopefully it's still on. I, I'll be coming here, you know, during quite soon, so I'd be really curious to see. But maybe I can find her things in the, in the internet as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay, nice, nice. Sounds beautiful. Yeah, there's definitely something that I should catch. Ah, huh, now we are disappearing. Okay, here is, this was a projection in, in, um, in the exhibition and I was using like um, iron dust to make patterns with it, symmetrical patterns, which, um, which I was moving around with a, with a magnet. And it, this was in a way commenting, well, as you can see, so dirt is one of the things that I'm quite interested in and, and this was in a way um, 
I was in a way wanting to explore these things that, that you know, things in, in our everyday surroundings that we don't necessarily want to actually get to know so well because we find them slightly repulsive or we should clean away this dust. And I was imagining or fantasizing about this kind of space where where all the dust would be left alone and it would sort of swirl and make these kind of beautiful things in the corners of the room and in a way, you know, indicating the patterns that we are taking in our everyday routines. So we are walking around, we create these little currents of air and these things, these little particles are settling into this, in a way, again, some kind of um, portraits of our daily life. And here was a little tray that was shaking, an aeroplane tray with a, you've all been sitting on the aeroplane and maybe some of you have been nervous and then you're, then you're checking at this, you know, this little, little cup there shaking away and you think like as long as it stays in the middle everything is fine and it will <laughs> most of the times it will and and uh, this also like approaching these kind of little things kind of minor details and in a way this is just still life as well only with a very minimal amount of ingredients so i had a tiny motor in there that was that was doing the job and i really like that little little piece of work here is, here is a, another video titled Taylor. So we, we have a man who is making a suit, a, a male, male's dark suit, and every now and then it's, it's like also this kind of sense of material is really strong in here. So like with the dust, you have the, the dirt here, you have the fabric in the mushrooms, you have the... So all these kind of different textures are something that I really like, like to pay attention that there's something really sensual in, in, in how different things feel, feel and so forth. So he's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 this one, yeah. It's, yeah, I was always thinking about the, Magritte. yeah, Magritte. Yeah, exactly, I was thinking about Magritte, Magritte sur surreal paintings, which I, I adore. Uh, so I was, this is a, this could be a little bit of a homage to his beautiful, beautiful and peculiar work. I, like, let's say when we talk about, when we read an image or when we, when we try to open an image and when we approach a, an artwork, it's always interesting because people are reacting so differently and you get so different, you know, ideas of what actually is happening. So I try to most often keep quite quiet about my own background, you know, ideas, and I'm more curious to hear what the, what the audience is, is how, how they are in a way, what they read, what they see, what's happening in their heads. So here on the, on the, on the wall here we had, next to the tailor, we had a, a flower in water which is slowly rotting away there. It's actually facing its own reflection. I was filming it a little bit from underneath and it's like the nar well, like narcissus, like the narcissist who is getting stuck with his image and never leaves until <laughs> falls in love with himself and disappears. So here are like, let's say more traditional still life, mm, or let's say what you might be calling them as more traditional photo photography series. So, so um, and as you can, maybe recognize that the Ikebana is quite, quite strongly present in, in these. But here we are again, you know, like years are going by and I'm back to the meat stall, you know. So it's, uh, that there's the flower, there's the, there's the bone, there's the, there, the, there they are these like fundamental things that, that still, you know. Yeah, she was also, yeah, she was washing these bones. Yeah, that was, that was, uh, she said. Yeah, I never saw I never saw her perform it, but it must be quite. Yeah, I can imagine that the smell must be quite a, an important ingredient in the in the whole performance. And at the same time, the, the bone has some kind of similarities with the uh, thirsty cabanas, which you see with flowers and, and uh, mushrooms. Yeah. Kind of form like these soft brown forms. Yeah. That you there, and the bone already yeah. Yeah, there's also a little bit, yeah, and there's also something about this, you know, this, 
Louise Bourgeois, when she holds this baguette under her arm, or this, you know, like this kind of little phallistic thing sticking out, you know, and she has this devilish look on her face. I don't know if you know the photo, but there are some, you know, similar similarities to her stuff as well. So, so here we have have this kind. Of, I was I was making these these photos in spaces that do not exist anymore. So there is this kind of in a way, this, this fleetness of, of life concretely in these, this, I was searching myself into buildings that were going to be demolished in Turquaria, and then I was, you know, just grab whatever happened to be around there and, and bring some flowers with me and then arranging, arranging the, uh, the image and then just packing my stuff and leaving the place. So these are, in a way, some kind of memento moris of, of um, of the places that I visited as well. Uh, this is this is my recent images from a recent exhibition in in, in uh, Turku, Väinö Aaltonen Museum in Finland as well. And this is this is now actually a documentation of a building also that does not exist anymore. I was there's a place or was a place in Denmark called the Danmark's Aquarium, Denmark, Danish Aquarium first aquarium building in, 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 in the Nordic countries. And I happened to walk in there just the year they were going to pull it down. It, was the, it had been around since uh, 1939. It opened just a couple of months before the World War broke out and before Denmark became occupied. So it, like, there was, there was so, so it was so loaded with, with symbolism and, and let's say the, the space and the time where it was born was felt extremely burdened with with a lot of different things. So I asked for permission to film there and I was I was granted and, and slowly I was I was filming how the fish tanks were being emptied. There are absolutely no people visible in these either. It's just the aquarium and you could even these you could regard as some sort of um, setups. They are imitations of nature but they are not nature. They are fabrications. They are they are illusions and, and, well, when you finally erase even the last life in a way out of it, so then there's not much, nothing left. They were extremely beautiful and spellbounding, very strange. There was, it was like some weird Tarkovskian world or something like this. Like they were like scenes, exactly like that. There was something very, very captivating. This is how it looked like in the, in the so-called I mean, it looked completely crazy. It was really falling into parts. It was like some kind of mad professor's uh, experimentational, uh, sick <laughs> kind of uh, thing going on there. And it looked like lethally dangerous. These lamps were hanging on top of water and these wires were practically touching the surface of these, these things and they were all bubbling like some kind of alchemy pots or something like that. But, but beautiful, weird, crumbling world. These were these kind of minerals that I was then connecting with the video. And just for the end, just a quick look at, at some photo series that, that I've been making during the year. So I work with video and with photo mainly and combine these two. And these are, well, let's say very much, I would say, following the still life tradition. You could, of course, ask yourself what, what all these various objects mean. They have a significance to me, but as a viewer, they might represent something else. I was very often drawn to material that has been thrown away or that I could find on the streets or there's my yoga mat and there's a table that I was finding. Like, let's say, in a way, lifting something out of the original context seemed important me as well, like that things are not exactly what they seem to be. Here was as well using this kind of color being sucked into the plant itself, so. And here again, things that have been found, same here. So these have been filmed or shot in different locations in, in Holland or in Netherlands and, and Japan, uh, St. Petersburg. Uh, US, New York. So you just walk around and collect stuff that you happen to see on the street. 
like you know, dragging all sorts of stuff with you, <laughs> like tree stumps and car tires and pieces of asphalt and, and stuff like this. So all of like in, in this latest series, I was, I was using uh, as the background color is, is uh, um, I was going to hardware stores and, and searching for, for uh, wires or plugs or things that which where the color was not, didn't have any kind of aesthetical value. The color was just a practical thing. And these colors happened to be extremely refined, I thought. So then I was, you know, marching with this wire to, to, to the paint shop, which mixed the colors for me. And so, and that became the background color of, the, of this, this series. And in a way, also recontextualizing the, the idea of what is beautiful and what is not beautiful and, and lifting ordinary things up into another type of a frame. Yeah, I was using, as you can see there, projected this kind of image. This is a mask, actually. Same goes for this one here. So this kind of layer, layerings. We are in the beginning again. <laughs> yeah. So um, I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> you have been a lovely audience.